the freedom to keep moving, to control your destiny, and to choose your path. And now, that freedom fits in the palm of your hand. It's called Ford Pass, the only app that gives you roadside assistance, Ford Pass rewards, and now when you buy or lease a new Ford, earn points you can use toward flexible complementary maintenance that gives you, well, more freedom. Ford Pass, built to keep you moving, built Ford proud. Visit your participating Ford dealership to find out about getting flexible complimentary maintenance when you buy or lease a new Ford and sign up for rewards. Roadside assistance is included for certain Ford owners and available to everyone for a per-service fee. Ford reserves the right to change program details without obligations. Visit your participating dealer or FordPassRewards.com for program rules and restrictions. Ford Pass, compatible with select smartphone platforms, is available via a download. Give your vehicle a spot-free shine with Turtle Wax Ice Wash and Wax. On sale now at O'Reilly Auto Parts for just $4.99. That's a 50% savings. For an unbeatable shine, just wash, rinse, and dry with Turtle Wax Ice Wash and Wax. Just $4.99 at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supplies. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The following program, the Rewind Sports 60, is sponsored by Jerry Riles and to the extent applicable, his guests. The views and opinions expressed therein do not necessarily reflect those of News Web Radio Company or its management. The Rewind Sports, the Rewind 60. Sports 60. 60, 60, 60. From the city of big shoulders, the jewel of the Midwest, comes a sports show that's one of a kind. One of a kind. From iconic players to iconic stadiums to iconic teams, this is my kind of town. Chicago! And the Rewind Sports 60 is my kind of show. From Air Jordan to Sweetness to Papa Bear Hallis, this city works hard but plays even harder. Danny Carlino and Jerry Riles bring you the Rewind Sports 60. Live, live, live. Rewind, the Rewind Sports, Sports 60. 60 starts now. That ball hit hard, deep, way back. He looks up, you can't put it on the board. Yes! Yes! Mercy! Mercy! <laughs> Mercy! Hey, Hawk! Hawk, you can say that again. You can definitely say that again. Mercy! Oh, my goodness! Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. We're streaming live on Facebook Live, broadcasting from the world's famous studios of WCPT 820 AM in the beautiful, beautiful city of Chicago. This is another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. Yours truly, Jerry Riles, for the fastest hour in sports conversation. Want you to be a part of what we're doing here, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, give us a call. Our number here, 773-763. WCPT 773-763-9278 and I tell you Hawk Harrelson a lot of the White Sox fans over there guarantee Ray Field Mercy! oh my god hey you know I got whiplash I got whiplash and I was just at home sitting on the uh, the old sofa there watching the uh, 60 inch television screen and before I can get my coffee and my tea and my burger and my hot dogs, yeah, all of the above. I had all that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Before I can get all that planted down and set down and ready to go. <laughs> ouch. Oh, yeah. Oh, ouch. The White Sox were losing five to nothing. Five, the first five batters. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happened? It's like. What the heck is going on? Five nothing in the top of the first inning. Lights out, game over. <laughs> How did Dandy Don Meredith used to say it? Turn out the lights, the party's over. The party certainly was over. Ladies and gentlemen, the White Sox get throttled over at Guarantee Ray Field. They got off to a bad start getting out of the uh, All-Star break the second half, and they have a great win last night. Ivan Nova pitched an outstanding game. I think uh, 86 pitches in their 5-1 uh, victory over the, the hot 
impressive, very talented Minnesota Twins, and you're thinking, hey, they're going to turn the corner, and this is something that they can uh, use to piggyback and, and maybe jumpstart after ending a four-game uh, losing streak. You think maybe this is something that they can do and they can handle the boys. Well, unfortunately, the boys came out and said, we got some lumber, baby. <laughs> Line them up. Line them up. Folks, let's get to our esteemed panel. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the one. He's the only. You haven't heard from him in a while. You haven't seen him in a while. He's the one and only. He is the Italian stallion. He's DC. He's Danny Carlino. What's up, Danny? Good evening, Jerry. Uh, we were just talking as we were heading into the studio that I think next year's home run derby participants <laughs> are already lining up to get Dylan Covey to get to pitch them uh, <laughs> the, the home run derby. You thought they had a lot of home runs this year in the home run derby. Next year, I mean, who knows what it'll be if he's doing it. But So f five batters... No, 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 no outs. They all scored. Um, so was that like a reverse per perfect game, or what do we call that? <laughs> it was perfect for the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, and he's already headed back to Charlotte. So I don't did he, did yeah. he even finish the game before they sent him down. No, he's he, like, hey, take a shower and get on the yeah, bus and don't yeah, stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rick Hahn was there with his uh, bag and everything. He said, hey, <laughs> you know, once you get out of the shower, just hey, <laughs> your bag's at the door. The bus is out there, brother. <laughs> we'll see you later. Use your own soap. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> and, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you love him. I love this guy, I'm telling you. I keep telling you. He could be over there on 95th Street on the south side. He could be at High Park. He could be at the museum. He could be at the Navy Pier. Ladies and gentlemen, he could be hanging out at City Hall and at Picasso right there at Daly Plaza. Or he can be in Schaumburg. He could be at Woodfield at Woodfield Mall. Maybe at Ranhurst. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, he sometimes can be in LaGrange. You just never know. But I tell you right now, for the fastest hour in sports conversation, he is here in Jefferson Park. He's on Milwaukee Avenue, North Milwaukee Avenue in the greatest studios in the greatest city he is our man on the street he's marty b what's up marty hey jerry good afternoon good afternoon to you too danny great to have you back and a lot of excitement this week lots to talk about but i just want to say one thing fans don't become despondent the rebuild is going well Big things are on the horizon. Regarding the White Sox. Absolutely. No question about it. Yeah, the only thing, the only concern that I had, and I love Danny Carlino. He's got the great uh, throwback White Sox baseball cap on for sure. But I, the one thing that I'm, I was kind of concerned about the Chicago White Sox after the great start that they had, and they continue to uh, you know, chip and claw and fight and scratch to get to that 500 mark, they get to the all-star break, take a little bit of break, and then they, they, they go into a tailspin, a nosedive, and I was concerned about that because they do have a lot of young players on this baseball team. Very young, uh, talented, there's no question about it. But the young players, they have to get acclimated to playing 162-game schedule. And when you're in the minor leagues, it's not that the transition isn't, isn't quite the same once you get to the professional level. And, and I was afraid that there was going to be a lull, that they were going to have a you know, a, a downfall, so to speak. I didn't anticipate it being as bad as it ended up being, getting out of the All-Star break. But I think it's important for Ricky Renneria to keep these guys as positive and upbeat as they possibly can because I think eventually they'll catch their groove. Now, there's like something like 60 games left in the regular season here. I think if they could put on a good showing down the stretch, it's only benefiting them moving forward as far as the rebuild is concerned. But that, those are my thoughts coming out of the All-Star break. I, I wanted them to continue to stay on pace, and unfortunately the young kids just simply couldn't do it. But no. again, I mean, they're facing the Minnesota Twins. Those guys are oh, – are you kidding me? It's a fine ball club. Jerry, you echo my sentiments exactly. I would have been thrilled with 8-8 eight and eight at this point mm. after the break. Mm. Uh, you know, that 3-13, and 13, that's tough to swallow. But um, fans – we're going to get on a little winning streak, and I think it's going to start tomorrow or Tuesday. Well, I mean, <laughs> or Wednesday or whatever. It, it didn't help. It's, it's coming. There's not much room for error. If you're, look, if you're looking for plain results versus development, when you have two of your better hitters in Tim Anderson and Eloy Jimenez out, it's not going to help things. Uh, but they still managed to beat Tampa Bay Rays in Tampa two out of yeah, three, but sure. they get swept by uh, four games by the Royals and lose two out of three at home to the Miami Marlins, the perpetual rebuilding right. team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was surprising. That, that that's that's kind of disappointing. But they're gonna. Uh, Eloy came back uh, today. He did. And, and Anderson's supposed to be coming back soon. So that then then we'll get a better gauge of where the development is versus their re poor record since the break. You know, again, I, as long as they can hover around, I want them to be able to climb back out close to the 500 mark. I think that's respectable for this ball team. Uh, they're still more or less learning on the job, so to speak. And you talked about Eloy was back today. 
Uh, Tim Anderson is expected to get back soon. I think he was like two for five in Charlotte with a home run uh, in Triple A ball the other night. So he's he's getting back to normal, and I I think it's just going to add more fuel to the fire. And Luis Robert, um, they're expecting a lot from him as well. So probably get a chance to see him in September when they have the September call-ups. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens also, not only on the south side, but on the north side with the trading deadline coming up uh, next week on the, on the 31st. Uh, these teams need uh, the Cubs. We didn't get a chance to really talk about them. We'll talk about them in our second segment here. Dan Marvelous Marvel will be joining us. He was up at Miller Park uh, taking in the Cubs bashing of the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, we didn't get a, no, a lot of chance to talk about that, so we will address it. But this trading deadline is going to be very interesting to see. And that bullpen for the Cubs. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Poor John Lester. I think, bull, I think uh, you, may call, you may call it a bullpen, but I think the well, Cubs those, fans are calling it a bull something else. A bull. A bull what, Marty? <laughs> there you go. A bull worth. <laughs> That's what I'll call it. <laughs> a bull worth. A giant poor, pile of it. Yes. Poor John Lester yesterday, man. This guy's throwing his throwing his lights on. He goes, okay, I'm going to get you to the eighth inning. I'm going to get you to the eighth inning. Now, can we just go home after that? I'll get you to the eighth inning. <laughs> and he said he was he had nothing left after That's that. It. That's it's, it. It's too bad they couldn't, they couldn't do, like, some of those uh, – some uh, lower level college or some minor league uh, double header <laughs> seven inning game just call it a day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, What's your closer? The rules will be the closer. That will be the best. I mean, I, I they don't I, have too many answers out you there. You know, I'm not. I'm not really a, a John Lester fan. I mean, I I, I respect what he does. I think he's a, a a very qualified pitcher. I know Rick Sutcliffe of ESPN and and, and Major League Baseball doing the telecast. He always proclaims John Lester as a future Hall of Famer, and it's going to take a I think a few more. Uh, a few more good seasons, a few more good outings in order for him to be uh, be a candidate or consider for the Hall of Fame. But I felt bad for the guy. I felt bad for him because when you get on the bump and you're throwing heat like that and you get the uh, your 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 uh, competition or your competitors baffled the way that he had them yesterday. I mean, there's only how many hits did he get up like two? Four at the most, I think, yesterday, whatever the case may be, John Lester pitched the lights out. He pitched his, his, his tail off. He said, okay, I'm going to hand it over to the bullpen. I'm going to hand it to you. And c just go, we speaking, don't we don't want it. Speaking of handing it. <laughs> we don't want it. They hand it right back. Boom. <laughs> Twice. Unbelievable. Chicago Bears in cap up at Bourbon A, ladies and gentlemen. They projected 8,000 plus fans on hand at Bourbon A for the first training camp workout. For your 2019 beloved Chicago Bears, folks, we'll get a chance to talk about that. But anything in the world of sports you want to talk about, we're right here for you at WCPT. Our number again, 773-763-9278, 773-763-9278. This is the Rewind Sports 60. Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion. The man on the street, Marty B. And, of course, when we come back, we'll be joined by the marvelous one. He's on our TR60 score hotline. This is the Rewind Sports 60. Ladies and gentlemen, lock it in. It's the end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout. So don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. The Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by the Liquor Barn, located in Wheeling and Niles. Stop by 287 East Dundee Road in Wheeling or 8170 Golf Road in Niles for all your wine and spirits needs. The Liquor Barn, located in Wheeling and Niles. And remember, tell Marcel and Tom in Wheeling that the Rewind Sports 60 told you to stop in and say hello. Mention the Rewind Sports 60 and receive a free gift. Hustle, Jan. Our daughters live for sports. Hey, their dentist told them your smallest piece of equipment may be your most important. Now they always wear mouth guards. Yeah, mouth guards help protect against broken teeth, head injuries too, like concussions. All from a little mouth guard. They're small, but mighty. Just like our kids. Talk to a Chicago Dental Society dentist. Visit cds.org slash mouth guard. Sponsored by the Chicago Dental Society, aired in cooperation with this station. The Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by Serenello's Ristorante Italiano. 
Inspired by his travels and passion for Italy's culture, executive chef Michael Bonner has created a broad menu of Italian fare, utilizing the freshest ingredients to create the fullest flavors to bring homemade, handcrafted pizzas and pastas, as well as prime steaks and fresh fish dishes to the table. Feel the energy while dining in a casual and rustic setting. Dine at natural reclaimed wood tables surrounded by inviting darker woods, exposed brick beams, subtle filament lighting, and accented with muted chocolate and caramel tones throughout. An impressive 50-foot bar lines an entire wall with seating for all. The perfect place to relax, eat, and drink with your family and friends. Serenello's Restaurant the Italiano is located at 601 North Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling. Tell them the Rewind Sports 60 told you to stop by. Hi, I'm Liz Nicholson Sullivan. As the wife of a nine-year NFL veteran suffering the long-term effects of untreated and undiagnosed head injuries, I know how dangerous concussions can be. The Concussion Legacy Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to keeping kids safe in sports. Their Team Up Speak Up program teaches kids to speak up to a coach or athletic trainer if they think their teammate might have a concussion. Whether you're a parent, coach, or athlete, you can make a difference. Join me and sign up at teamupspeakup.org. The Rewind Sports 60 is sponsored by Bazaar World. Stop by Bazaar World in Nile celebrating their grand opening with a huge sale. Hats, gloves, belts, rings, bracelets, necklaces, and much, much more. The largest jewelry and accessory store in the Chicagoland area. Bazaar World, located at 8526 West Golf Road in Niles, near the corner of Milwaukee and Golf. Bazaar World in Niles. Stop in and say hello to Alex. Mention a Rewind Sports 60 and receive a free gift. If it's Chicago sports you want, you're in the right place. Hello, Chicago! The Rewind Sports 60. That's the best in the city of Chicago. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 Live with the best sports panel in Chicago. Lock it in. What do you want to know? Come on. Or I'm going to go in now, so if you don't care. What? Doesn't matter which one run. There'll be a quarterback that'll be named next week that'll be the starter. There's three quarterbacks on this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever ones don't, we'll back him up. Period. Cut and dry. It's nobody's concern but ours. Nobody's. Next. Injuries from the uh, game. Talk to the trainer. Next. All right, now. Mike, why are you in such a bad mood? What do you care? Right. Okay. If you were two and seven, you'd be in a bad mood too. What next? Mike, is this more like a training camp type practice as opposed to a regular season? Yes. Next. Um, not very much fun, is it? Stay in your lane, bro. Watch it, sucker. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is the Rewind <laughs> Sports 60. I'm telling you, <laughs> I don't know if it gets any better than that. This, we're expecting a great, great 2019, as far as our Chicago Bears are concerned, and if you're going to talk anything about uh, what's going on in training camp and Matt Nagy and his uh, his young prospects, his young team, his young talented offense and defense, make sure you give us a call, 773-763-9278, 773-763-WCPT. But uh, this week, when training camp opened up, everyone reported on uh, Thursday, the first practice was uh, Friday, and of course yesterday opened to the public, and they said that there were an estimated 8,000 340 Bear fans out there at Bourbon A to watch the Bears practice for an hour and 45 minutes. They had given out, the report said that the Bears had given out 26,000 tickets to Bear fans. They were free tickets, of course, but they had given out 26,000 tickets for Bear fans to go up to Bourbon A to watch the practice. And Matt Nagy and, and a lot of the Bear players said that they were just simply overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the response of their Bear fans coming out to support this team. Unbelievable. I think today they, uh, they actually uh, had pads on and they were doing seven-on-seven seven drills and uh, ten-on-ten, but they were overwhelmed by the support of the Chicago Bear fans. And I guess coming after uh, the 12-4 and, four, 12 and uh, four record from a year ago, and just missing advancing in the playoffs and potentially there are some people uh lewis riddick with the nfl i think nfl or is he with the espn or the nfl network one of the case he believed that the bears actually could have advanced to the super bowl he felt that that team last year was 
very talented enough, and Matt Nagy was very skilled enough in his play calling that they had everything in place to advance to the Super Bowl. Hence, we know the doink game. So double, double doink, double doink. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Don't don't excuse me. Don't cheat Cody out of one of his doinks. <laughs> double doink. He needs and he's really he's really high on this football team again this year as well. Now the pressure certainly is going to be on, and it you know every it's interesting how people because we always have predictions. You know, oh, we think the Bears are going to be this. Oh, we think the Bears, they're going to do this. Well, it's hard to predict. Obviously, you know, July twenty eighth, when you still got you know four or five more weeks or five or six more weeks before the regular season gets underway, and, and injuries always play a factor. Now, knock on wood, come in, knock on wood, the Bears were very, very fortunate and very blessed last year that they didn't sustain a lot of injuries and any really serious, serious injuries to their team, to their unit, which hence allowed them to advance and continue to play the type of football they were uh, coached up on and they were capable of playing to to get that 12-4 and record and make it to the playoffs. So hopefully this season as well, uh, the injuries will be very, very uh, low and very, very minor. And again, uh, they got a tough schedule, but we just have to wait and see what happens. As far as the schedule is concerned for the Chicago Cubs, getting out of the blocks, they get one in Milwaukee against the Brewers up at Miller Park and our own Dan Marvel, the marvelous one, Took in the affair, and I got to tell you, I was waiting to see if, uh, <laughs> I, I, Marvelous One, I was waiting to see if you were going to step up to the dish as a pinch hitter and crank one out. Talk about a, a game of ages. Yeah. Whoa, take it yes, easy guys. there. Talk about a game hey Talk about a game of ages. Can you hear us? Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Speaking How to you from the beautiful state of Wisconsin, where the Cubs defeated the Brewers 11-4 to at Miller Park, or as we call it, Wrigley Field North, before 43,000 fans. And, um, you know, it's funny. The bullpen actually gave up one hit today in four and two-thirds innings, which is uh, really a, a change from the way they blew four games on this road trip. Because you notice that neither Strope nor Kimbrough pitched. It was Brock and Kinsler and Ryan and Howland finished out the game. And I was going to tell Danny, you know, I got an idea for next year's um, home run derby. How about if Davies pitches the Schwarber? <laughs> That'll just be the whole thing? Yeah, seven... <laughs> Seven RBIs, a home, a grand slammer, and a three-run homer in the second and the fourth inning, respectively. It was seven nothing. Then Quintana gave up the three runs, was taken out before he could get the decision, and uh, then the, the bullpen gave up one hit the rest of the way. So uh, it was a great economic boom for Wisconsin. The hotels, the restaurants, and the thirty dollars for parking. It's a uh, it's a great weekend for everybody. No, it it, it it's uh, Miller Park is a very nice park. My daughter uh, Teresa, as a matter of fact, went on a a. Uh, a trip there, what, about a week or two ago uh, to Miller Park with her her, uh, her position. She's an intern at a uh, company out in the northern suburbs, and they took all the interns up to Miller Park, and it was her first time there, and she loved it. She thought it was fantastic. She was like, what took me so long to get up here? It is a beautiful, beautiful park. But one thing I didn't understand, and Kimbrell, of course, he needed the day off after yesterday. You understand that. He he needed the day off yesterday. That's why he didn't see him today. He might need more than a day off. Yeah, but I I did I what I didn't understand yesterday as far as the ballpark is concerned, a, a marvelous one, and 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 maybe you can speculate on it. Why did they close? Why did they close the 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 roof yesterday when it apparently was a beautiful beautiful day? Today they left it open and you saw fans in the stands just fanning themselves because it was so hot. Why did they close it yesterday and and didn't close it today? Well, there was no rain today in the forecast. I don't know about last night since I wasn't there, but the, the funny thing is they say that when they close the roof, it gets more stuffy and uh, it's more uncomfortable when it's closed. So I don't know. If, and it's, it's odd to me that they can close it and open in the middle of a game to begin with. You'd think that they want it to be fair for both sides, if you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. It, I don't it, get that. Yeah. Well, I think they don't, they don't have any – it's not climate controlled. So uh, oh. there's no air conditioning, there's no heat or anything in, in the building, so you get what you get. Maybe that, yeah, maybe that helps yell at shit home runs when they, when they close it. I don't know. But no, I, do, but I, I do think there are rules, though. They can't, like, close it in the middle of an inning. Like, it's got to be open. Yeah, it's gotta, Unless it's pouring and you'll do it. Right, you know, right, right, right. Yeah, but you would think it's got to be some type of ruling because you're absolutely right, Marvelous One. I mean, it, it, you know, the, the, with the air or whatever air that's coming in there, I don't know if there's a wind factor or anything like that, but if you're closing it, it changes the whole... Just 
just do like the gates of the old giant stadium. You know, we're kicking a field goal. We need to win, or they're kicking a winning field goal. Let them kick into the win. Open it up, says Parcells. <laughs> but what was the reaction, Kyle Schwarber? I think going into this game, he was like one for seventeen. He's been st struggling at the dish. He finally. Again, I don't know if you heard about the Sox, but they, they got their brains beat in. Before I can sit down with my popcorn and chips and everything, uh, it's a 5 nothing affair because the ball's flying out of the ballpark. I'm going back and forth between a Cub game and a Sox game. I turn on the Cubs, and the Cubs are up 4 nothing, and they continue to show Shorver, and I'm like, he must have hit a grand slam. And lo well, and behold, he hit a grand salami. What was the reaction of Cub fans like when he jacked it out for the first time? Well, I mean, it's, it's like, like I say, Wrigley Field North. It's let's go Cubs. And he'd been, you know, moved to the eighth position in the lineup, which is kind of ironic. Cause yeah. He's hitting in front of the pitcher. So, I mean, he shouldn't get a good pitch. And he was padding behind Hap, who got three walks today. So it was kind of bizarre. His Davies just couldn't really do anything. He, he loaded the bases in, in, the, in that second inning, and then the first pitch to Schwarber, boom. And then he hit another home run in the fourth off Davies. So the Milwaukee uh, starting pitching is, is seriously injured and in shambles, uh, according to what I understand. And, uh, so that might be good for the Cubs, who are now, you know, pulled the game ahead of them. Even though, you know, they they're tied with St. Louis now for first. Well, it's, yeah, they're two games up in the, uh, in the in the division. They're tied with St. Louis Cardinals, who took it on the chin against the Houston Astros. So um, the Cubs will have a day off tomorrow. Then they're head down to the Cardinals to face them. So it's going to be an interesting run between uh, now and 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 the trading deadline to see what's going to happen as far as any moves for the Cubs are concerned. But more importantly. Uh, if Joe Madden can get this team to play consistent baseball, we know that they can, uh, you know, that they have the manpower, they have the talent, they have the skills, they have the ability to get the job done. But it's a matter of consistency, and that's one thing that the Cubs haven't been able to do, especially getting out of the All Star break, play consistent baseball. Now they're still trying to see. Uh, they're speculating that uh, Ben Zobris will be returning to the team, uh, probably late August, early September. We still don't know what's going to happen with Addison Russell, although Theo Epstein said. Just because we sent him down to the minors doesn't mean we're trying to get rid of him. We just want to get his head cleared, get him focused, and get him back up here and to play some effective baseball. So it's going to be a run for the money in that division as far as those three particular teams are concerned. Marvelous, can you hang on with us? And uh, yeah. we got to take a short time out. we got to okay. do our TR60 score update with uh, Gabe Salgado from Guaranteed Rate Field, and then we'll be back with you uh, to talk some Cub baseball. Okay, my good friend? Okay. And some Sox baseball and some Bears football. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it locked in. If you want to join in and talk to the Marvelous One, feel free to ring us ring us up. Ring our number at 773-763-9278-773-763 WCPT. Gabe Solgato from the Guarantee Rate. Field on the south side, home of the Chicago White Sox with a TR60 update. Gabe, take it away. TR60 Sports Update. From Guaranteed Rate Field is sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation. The White Sox just couldn't capitalize off of Saturday night's win. On Sunday, they lost their series finale to the Minnesota Twins by the final score of 11-1, with their only run coming courtesy of a John J. RBI single in the sixth inning. Sox manager Rick Renteria was ejected for arguing balls and strikes during the game, and in his press conference, there's what he had to say. We had to try to just stop the bleeding as quickly as possible. That's the bottom line. And we had to bring in a relief core to kind of patch it. You know, give us the best shot to kind of minimize the damage and allow us an opportunity to see if we can get back in the ballgame. Dylan Covey took the hill for the Southsiders today, but he didn't record a single out as he gave up five runs and was pulled after 14 pitches. And after the game, the team announced that he would be sent back down to AAA Charlotte. What is Renteria's immediate outlook on uh, Covey's future? You know, he came back. He had been throwing the ball well down there, going through his rehab and everything. And right now, it's probably just a reset. Get him back there, see if we can get him back on track. The Cubs, on the other hand, were able to salvage their series with Milwaukee as they beat the Brewers 11 to 4 in Sunday's finale in Miller Park. The Northsiders got seven RBIs from Kyle Schwarber this afternoon. And down in Bourbon, the Bears had their first fully padded practice at training camp so far. Tight end Adam Shaheen was held out due to back pain. Safety Haha -Ha Clinton Dix is still on the pup list with a sprained knee. And uh -huh. Kicker Eddie Pinheiro made seven of eight field goal attempts during today's practice with one of them coming from 63 yards. The Bears will continue practicing until they make their first me? appearance at Soldier Field this year next weekend for the annual Family Fest. This update is sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation, MEF, empowering the next generation of leaders. Go to monstereducationfoundation.org to learn more. I'm Gabe Salgado for the Rewind Sports 60 in WCPT 820, Chicago. It's the end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. 
the hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. The Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by Serenello's Ristorante Italiano. Inspired by his travels and passion for Italy's culture, executive chef Michael Bonner has created a broad menu of Italian fare, utilizing the freshest ingredients to create the fullest flavors to bring homemade, handcrafted pizzas and pastas, as well as prime steaks and fresh fish dishes to the table. Feel the energy while dining in a casual and rustic setting. Dine at natural reclaimed wood tables surrounded by inviting darker woods, exposed brick beams, subtle filament lighting, and accented with muted chocolate and caramel tones throughout. An impressive 50-foot bar lines an entire wall with seating for all. The perfect place to relax, eat, and drink with your family and friends. Serenello's Restaurant the Italiano is located at 601 North Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling. Tell them the Rewind Sports 60 told you to stop by. Hi, I'm Liz Nicholson Sullivan. As the wife of a nine-year NFL veteran suffering the long-term effects of untreated and undiagnosed head injuries, I know how dangerous concussions can be. The Concussion Legacy Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to keeping kids safe in sports. Their Team Up Speak Up program teaches kids to speak up to a coach or athletic trainer if they think their teammate might have a concussion. Whether you're a parent, coach, or athlete, you can make a difference. Join me and sign up at teamupspeakup.org. The Rewind Sports 60 is sponsored by Bazaar World. Stop by Bazaar World in Niles, celebrating their grand opening with a huge sale. Hats, gloves, belts, rings, bracelets, necklaces, and much, much more. The largest jewelry and accessory store in the Chicagoland area. Bazaar World, located at 8526 West Golf Road in Niles, near the corner of Milwaukee and Golf. Bazaar World in Niles. Stop in and say hello to Alex. Mention the Rewind Sports 60 and receive a free gift. Basketball, soccer, hockey. When it comes to sports, my son is all in. Football. He always wears his mouth guard. Lacrosse. His dentist said the right mouth guard helps protect against broken teeth and head injuries. Skateboarding. Like concussions. Ooh, wrestling. Ask your dentist which mouth guard is best for your young athlete and relax. Bull riding. A little. Just kidding, Mom. Talk to a Chicago Dental Society dentist. Visit cds.org slash mouth guard. Sponsored by the Chicago Dental Society. Aired in cooperation with this station. The Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by the Liquor Barn, located in Wheeling and Niles. Stop by 287 East Dundee Road in Wheeling or 8170 Golf Road in Niles for all your wine and spirits needs. The Liquor Barn, located in Wheeling and Niles. And remember, tell Marcel and Tom in Wheeling that the Rewind Sports 60 told you to stop in and say hello. Mention the Rewind Sports 60 and receive a free gift. If it's Chicago sports you want, you're in the right place. Hello, Chicago! The Rewind Sports 60. That's the best in the city of Chicago. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 live with the best sports panel in Chicago. Lock it in. This is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them. Can't do it. Cannot win with Don't them. Don't do it. Cannot coach with them. Don't. Can't do it. Nope. I want winners. Winners. I want people that want to win. They call me Mr. Tips. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rewind Sports 60. Yours truly, Jerry Riles, along with the Italian Stallion, Danny Carlino, the man on the street, Marty B., and, of course, the marvelous one, on our TR60 hotline, Dan Marver, Gabe Salgado with our TR60 update coming up. Just before we're out of here, the fastest hour in sports conversation. If you're just tuning in, you're just joining us, talking some Cub baseball, talking some Sox baseball, talking some Bears football, anything in the world you want to talk about, we're right here for you, 773-763-9278, 773-763-WCPT. And I got to tell you, if I were a kicker, And I felt that I was confident enough in my ability and I had the distance. And I was, you know, looking for an opportunity. I would I would call Hallis Hall. I would call Matt Nagy. 
I would get in contact with the Bears and say, hey, you know what? Why don't you give me a tryout? Now, I didn't get a chance. Gabe said that one of the uh, the kickers that they have in camp uh, kicked a 63-yarder. Um, I guess he got the information from our good buddy, a friend of the program, Mark Grody, who does great work here in this town. Um, but the kid kicked a 63-yard field goal, which is good. It's it, That's good. But if I were a kicker, say you just got out of college, you're getting drafted, or you know maybe you played at Northern, or you played at Southern, you played at Eastern or Western, I don't know. And you felt you were pretty decent in kicking the football. I go, hey, you know what? Let me come up there. Let me try it out. Let me try it and see what happens. You never know. Kurt Warner. Wasn't it Kurt Warner? He was bagging groceries. Rams? He was bagging groceries. Yeah. And playing for the Iowa Barnstormers <laughs> in, in his spare time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, he said, hey, you never know. You never know. Let's go back out to the phone line, pick it up with Marvel from uh, Miller Park. Dan, Marvelous Marvel, you there? I don't know if it was on the or off the year. I predicted that Edwards, Russell, and Descalza wouldn't be on the roster on August 1st, and that's true. And if they could get anything for any of them, I, I, would, ex- I would expect them to get – it's not going to be a big name, like a leadoff man and another reliever, because they, they want to have at least – seven or eight different relievers it looked like to me. But they did get Holland as the second left-handed man for the Yellow series at least. So I would But what does that mean? What does no, that mean? No. I mean, it means they're, they're desperate. They, they, need, they needed to get another left-handed pitcher to, to, for the, for the Yellow at bat yesterday, for example. Mm. And, uh, and Ryan did a great job today in relief. So they have the two lefties in the bullpen. But they, they still are going to look for more relief. And possibly a leadoff man, in my opinion. So I mean, I understood that that you know, um, uh, with the, uh, the injury at catcher, so they they acquired the catcher from the Royals. But yeah, Maldonado. Th- th- then then you got rid of your really only reliable left-handed pitcher out of the bullpen, and Mike Montgomery in order to acquire him. <laughs> although, I, I, although he wasn't very reliable this year, if you look at his stats. But yeah. I mean, compared to compared to I mean, what's the more pressing? Not, you you still have more holes in the bullpen than you did before. And, you know, I don't think the catching situation was in that dire need that you needed to get somebody new. It just seemed very odd. Contr- I think if they'd done Contreras, who's going to be out ten, only 10 days, they wouldn't have done that because now they have the three catchers and Maldonado hasn't played a lick since Contreras came back. So uh, maybe Caratini will be traded. Which is a possibility. It is a possibility. But there, I think it's an insurance policy for the, the Cubs at that catcher position because of the injury. Uh, also, Caratini plays plays more than just catcher too. They like to have. Yeah, that, that's uh, true. Well, that, that, if you play for Joe Madden, <laughs> you play you, anybody. You, got, you, you play more than one position. Two arms? <laughs> Get on out there! <laughs> but coach, I, I don't play center field. Who cares? Get on out there! <laughs> Yo, you haven't played center field. You are today. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so are you are you concerned? Like, there are I, there there are a few media types here in uh, the Chicago market covering both baseball teams and. I was one of three individuals who said that I don't think that the Cubs are going to make the playoffs based on uh, right now what we've been able to see, uh, and especially after this road trip that they've got, gotten off of, despite the fact that they were able to put up some big numbers against Milwaukee to get out of there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when they go down to St. Louis. But are you concerned about this baseball team, and do you think they still have enough in their tank and enough viable players to go down the stretch during the dog days of summer, August and September, to make the playoffs? Well, you know, the starting pitching was pretty good. Hendricks and Lester. Quintana wasn't that great. But on a given day, their starting pitching matches up very well with anybody else. However, I will tell you this. The wild card is not going to come out of the NL Central this year. No. Because, it, it's, you know, because of the way it's going, where there are three teams that are like eight games over 500. So you're going to have to win that division. And it's possible. Milwaukee's got their problems with pitching, don't forget. But if they get the hater, it's pretty much all over. Um, in terms of St. Louis, I, I, you know, I, I think that they're maybe the strongest team right now. Well, that's the one thing about the Cardinals as far as their uh, their blueprint is concerned. They usually, even if they have a, a halfway decent team, they usually play effective baseball down the stretch. That's just how they're built. That's what their mojo is all about. And they're going to dig in and play some effective baseball uh, winding down. And, of course, with the rivals of being the Cubs, coming to town, and of course we can't forget Chris Bryant saying St. Louis, what's there? It's a boring town. That's going to rile up the fans, and I I, I think it's going to be fun. 
I think it's going to be exciting if you're a baseball fan, if you're a National League fan, and of course of the of the National League Central. It's going to be fun watching baseball down the stretch. We'll see what happens with these teams. Hey, real quick, marvelous one. Let's go out to our phone lines. We got a, a caller. Russ is patiently been hanging on. I disconnected. Marvelous one. Marvin, give us a call back. Russ, welcome to the Rewind Sports 60. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. You know, I was listening to your show coming home, and I just have to call. Where do you see the optimists with the White Sox? I see a team that is pure garbage. I mean, this clown they had today, is this the same clown that pitched one inning in Kansas City? I think I think we just disconnected uh, Russ. Russ, give us a call back. I think Dylan Covey cut him off. <laughs> he heard that. He heard that. He listened. <laughs> hey, Russ, thank you. We appreciate you. We're sorry for cutting you off. You want to jump back in? Just give us a ring back. Uh, I, 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 I'm not. I don't want to call him a, a clown because he's out there and he's pitching his tail off. It's, it's somebody un- else's job to do that anyway. It, yeah, it's somebody else's <laughs> job to do that. It, it, it's unfortunate that every pitch that he tried to throw, I think, he, you know, whether it's a fastball, a curveball, a sinker, or a, I don't think he has a splitter, but uh, the four pitches that he has that he tried to throw, unfortunately for him today, and that's just how the game goes. That's just how the game goes, Russ, and you certainly know this. I mean, Remember Mark Burley, we just celebrated the anniversary of his, his, his perfect game. Mark wasn't sure how effective he was going to be uh, when, when, he, when he pitched the perfect game, but it, it happened. Some pitchers go out, they feel like they have their stuff, and <laughs> next thing you know is Jack Master Flash at the plate. They're fighting at the, they're fighting at the bat rack to get out there. That's what was happening today against the Minnesota Twins team. They got embarrassed yesterday by Ivan. Nova, right? They got embarrassed by him. The guy was just throwing things off the table and they couldn't connect with him. Today, they say, hey, it's showtime. Let's get to it. Now, they sent the kid back down to to, to, to AAA to try to, you know, clear his head up. But as far as this team is concerned, my opinion, and again, I've told you, if you listen to the show long enough, as long as Ricky Renneria has been the manager for this White Sox baseball team, I wasn't sold on it. I don't want the scrap heat from the Cubs. The Cubs are like, get out of here. We, want, we don't want you. I think they gave him eight million bucks or whatever. The White Sox go, okay, we'll pick up your garbage. I wasn't a big fan of that. I wasn't a big fan of Ricky Renneria. But watching what he's been able to do with this baseball team, of course, congratulations to Rick Hahn and, 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 and Kenny Williams for them bringing in the prospects that they were able to get and hoodwinking the Chicago Cubs and getting rid of Quintana and, and, and getting Cease and, of course, uh, Aloy over here. Congratulations to them, but I wasn't sold on Rick Renneria. But now with the prospects that he has, he's communicating with them. He's telling them they have to continue to play hard, play effective, and play. This is a long season. You have to play at a major league level. When Johan Mancada made the uh, error in the field yesterday at third base, Ricky Renneria went over to the guys in the dugout and said, "Hey, you know what? It happens. Stay focused. It happens." And 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 what did they do? They buckled down and they came away with the victory. So I, I I'm not gonna call him. Hey man, hang on real quick. Hello, Russ, are you there? Hello. Yeah, sorry, yeah. you got disconnected. So I don't I don't think that the, I don't I don't think that this team is overrated. I don't think they're a bunch of garbage. I think it's a rebuilding process. I think Rick Renneria is doing a. Uh, as best a job as he possibly can as a skipper, as the manager. He's matured in that role. He got tossed out earlier today defending Eloy, who got called out on a strike that it was n- it wasn't even in the strike zone. So he went out to protect his player. He has matured in his role as the skipper for the, the White Sox. I personally still don't think, and he's a nice guy, he's a great guy, he's a good baseball guy, but I still personally don't think he's that guy that's going to get you over the hump to get to the World Series. But he's the right guy right now to work with these young team, these young players and get them acclimated to playing Major League Baseball for 162 games. I think he's in a perfect role right now, but this team, there's a lot in store moving forward, in my opinion. Russ, what do you think? Where's the pitching? You wouldn't go out for Baumgartner or this kid from Detroit to give up some, if, if you can keep them for two to three years. Every time they bring up a kid, that this kid, I wouldn't send them to the minors. I send them to Siberia. <laughs> One in seven? That kid, is, there's no hope for this kid to clear his head. I mean, where's your starters? Nobody ain't going to be that good. Lopez ain't. Look at this. What's this kid? He was 10 and 1. Mm. Now he's what, 11 and 4? Mm-hmm. Well, where's your starters? You can have all the great pension you want, ball players. 
You got no pitching. You well, got half the worst of them, ERA in baseball. Half of them are banged up. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Tommy John was on the White Sox. You swear he was still on the team with all the guys Russ, that got getting Tommy John. Russ, are you a Sox fan? Half the just the pitchers that we're we're talking about, they're banged up. We're not talking about winning we'll this year. Up on the Sox. We're, we're we're not listen. We're not talking about winning this year. We're trying to get these guys healthy, and we're trying to get these guys prepared, and we're trying to get them acclimated to playing at a high level consistently, and that's what they're trying to do right now. Whatever we do this this second half, anything that the White Sox have accomplished, it's all gravy right now because there's no real expectation. It's an identical blueprint of what happened on the north side with the Cubs when they were going through their walls. They got their prospects up here. They grinded and lost 100 games here, 98 games here, whatever they did. And then once they finally got everything together, of course, they got rid of Ricky Renneria, and they bring in Joe, <laughs> in Joe, Joe Madden. And the, the, the rest is history as far as the north side is concerned. They're trying to do the same thing, in my opinion, on the south side. Marty B., what do you got for him real Hello, quick? Jerry, yeah, real quick, Jerry, first of all, Next year, perhaps, might not even be the year next year. I'm looking for the year after next. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the year. Um, one thing, I, 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 this is a, a, just an, a gut feeling that I have. When Jose Quintana's contract is done with the Cubs, he's coming back to the No, no, we, I, I don't want him. No. You don't want him. Uh, uh, Russ, you don't want him, do you? No, 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 you know what? If he was that good, the Sox wouldn't have traded him. Bingo, bingo. If he was that good, the Sox never would have gotten rid of him. Yeah, it was a great guy, move. He's just, he's just an unlucky. He's got an unlucky horseshoe. What is he? Seven and seven, and the Cubs are better than the Sox. Yeah, you he know, still can't win games. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if it's, a, I don't know if it's a horseshoe or what. I, I really, be- I believe it has something to do with maybe his mechanics, or maybe with something that he's doing mentally uh, late in ball games, whether it's the fourth or the fifth or sixth inning. He's got good stuff. It's just, it's just something that's missing, and and it's just, it's, it's consistently bad for him. And Don well, Cooper will picture. correct those problems. No, he was with us before, and Don Cooper tried to correct the problems, and it, it, it didn't work. Jerry, all those games that he went into six, seven innings, one run, no runs, oh, my gosh, he was phenomenal He with never us. really got to the six or seven innings with, with the White Sox, and, and luckily with the Cubs. He, he usually breaks down around the fifth to sixth inning. If you stretch hold, uh, Quintana to the seventh inning, it's lights out. That's just how it is, I, and I think it's a mental approach for him. I think it's mental. I don't know if he gets fatigued. I don't think one, once he gets fatigued that the, his, his mechanics break down. But whatever the case may be, you get that guy in the fifth, sixth inning, it, it, it's, a, it's lights well, out. Well, he's not a number one. He's a number three pitcher. Luckily, I, I, he, at best, he's a number three. Yeah, I wouldn't because that's the honest. That was the excuse he left the stocks for. Yeah. Oh, they, look, at they, he loses two to one, one to nothing. He goes to the Cubs, he loses two to one, one yep. to nothing. It's, it's like this guy just lets him not hit. They can't score even when he's with the Cubs. It seems like they bring him down. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Hey, Russ, thank you, man. We appreciate your call. Hey. It's the fastest hour in sports. Thanks for listening, brother. We appreciate you. Real quick, marvelous one. we got to get to the man on the street, brother. What's your uh, final comment? Well, my final comment is uh, at least on this nine-game road trip, the Cubs get to sleep on their beds on Thursday night and Monday night. Maybe they will help. When they get to St. Louis, to pretend that they're at home. Well, they're gonna have to. They're gonna. They better get some, plenty of rest because they got a lot of work ahead of them. That's for sure. Marvelous one. Thank you for chiming in, brother. We appreciate you. Hope we'll see you in studio tomorrow All or right. next week, my good friend. See Drive home safely. Right He's the marvelous Thank one. You. He's the marvelous one. Dan Marver on our TR60 hotline. He's the one. He's the only in studio. He's Marty B. Marty, what do you got going on? Just so many things are happening around Chicago. Uh, just one thing before I forget, I want to. Um, mentioned that Brian Baradoni, a marvelous, marvelous asset to the National Association of Realtors, has given 17 terrific years of service. Brian uh, is stepping down. He has a plethora of new endeavors on this plate. We'll keep you posted, folks, but NAR can be very grateful that they had Brian on on, uh, on board for 17 years. The NAR? What uh, yes, is? National Association of Realtors. He was their National Association political of affairs strategist. 
did a wonderful thing. There's nobody in the city of Chicago who loves our city more than Brian Baradoni. Well, I love it more than Brian, I can tell you that, oh, okay. that's for sure. Well, Jerry, I'll, I'll buy that. Hey, really listen, well. real quick, Marty, yeah. i got to say hello to a good friend, George, from uh, Gale Street Inn, just down the street in Jefferson Park, had an opportunity to have uh, dinner there with my beautiful, lovely wife, Lisa, on, on, on Friday, and I hadn't been over to Gale Street in a few years. George was there looking dapper, looking fantastic, greeting and hosting everyone. He is fantastic. Hopefully he's listening. But we had the fish and chips or the fish and fries or whatever. Unbelievable. And I'm not just saying this because I know George and I like Gale Street Inn and it's right down the street just south on uh, Milwaukee Avenue here uh, in Jefferson Park. He's been a uh, fixture there for years. But the fish and the chips that, the, that they served us, you know, normally when you go to a place, they're going to give you two, you know, fried uh, cod fish, mm -hmm. maybe three. Listen, I, I counted. I counted. We had to take some home. I counted. R right now, I had like three of them last night, you know, I was watching, you know, whatever. There were 10 in the box, 10, in, 10 pieces in the box. Lisa and I both, we ate about five or six of them when we were there. So that's saying we got like 16 pieces of fish for a very, very reasonable cost. I'm like, man, this is fantastic. So, George, thank you so very much. We'll certainly be back down there, and uh, good to see your smile on the face. Hope you're checking us out. Go ahead, now, man. Now, Jerry, I just have to say this in conjunction with, with what you've just said. It always pays to have friends in high places. <laughs> well, and, and in the kitchen. <laughs> and ironically enough, perhaps you could give George a call tomorrow, because tomorrow evening, Lenora and I are entertaining our very dear friend, Mr. Alvaro Burbano, before he returns to Cartagena, uh, Colombia, South America to um, uh, oversee a very new big apartment complex that he's developing. Oh, really? So we're going to celebrate his 65th birthday tomorrow evening at the Gale Street Inn. Are you really? Oh, we wouldn't pick another place. Tell George to Rewind Sports 60 cent you and you're Marty B, the man on the street. He'll de definitely take care Will of he be? Is he usually there on he's Monday? Usually, he's a great host. He's oh, great. great. Host. But don't order the fish and chips. I think they're all out. <laughs> Jerry has them all. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Alvaro is a big seafood eater, so we'll have to pick out something for him. I know what I'm having, the ribs. There you go. The ribs are fantastic over there. They just fall off the bone. Yeah, I love that place. And it's just on the street from our studio. It's it's awesome. What else you got there, Marty B? Yeah, another thing I just want to mention that I'm delighted to know, and we really don't have the time to go into this, but Brad Considine, who is the Director of Strategic Initiatives for uh, the Alliance to Prevent Legionnaire's Disease, oh. there's lots of things that are going to be coming out in the news about some some very new innovative concepts to really curb this from ever happening again. So that's on its play. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're 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 Chicago land. We're we're north. We're south. We're everywhere, and I know that from time to time I put a lot of concentration on what's happening in the northern suburbs. But I have to do it once again because this affects all of us in all nooks and crannies of our state, not only our state but our country. Microplastics. It's become a big big problem. Now you're going to have an opportunity to learn more about how microplastics are impacting your family and what all of us can do to help this dire situation. Now, I'm mentioning this because I want to give you plenty of time to put this on your calendar. Wednesday, August the 14th, and I know, again, it's up in our suburbs. I wish you could be in downtown Chicago, but I know the players in place. This is going to be worth your while. 6.30 to 8 at the Highland Park Library at 494 Laurel Avenue. They have got a panel together that is just going to knock your socks off. Expert speakers from the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, the Alliance for the Great Lakes, and the Prairie Research Institute. I will find out prior to this who those speakers are, but I know they're going to be impeccable. And it's going to be hosted by our state senator, Julie Morrison of the Illinois Environmental Council. You gotta, gotta go. Now, RSVP, I-L-E-N-V-I-R-O, elanviro.org slash Morrison, elanviro.org slash Morrison. Okay, that's that for that. Um, I'm very disturbed about our mayor, our esteemed mayor, Ms. Lori Lightfoot, with her commentary referring to a very leading ranking person in the fraternity of, of uh, police, referring to him as a clown.
Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm very yeah. disturbed by this. And then I'm even more disturbed to learn late this afternoon from one of our esteemed colleagues who has some other obligations and will be with us very, very soon again, that apparently on WGCI Radio this week, Lori simply said, you know what? People really don't care what I say as long as I get shit done. <laughs> And I'm so disturbed when I hear this. And this comes from our reliable colleague. I'll guarantee you one thing. Ms. Santita Jackson, our marvelous host in the morning, would never, ever condone such language. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fabriclasted, and I'm, I'm surprised. Wow, to, 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 to hear that. And uh, it, is, it, is, it is disappointing, but... Um, uh, there's a lot of work to be done in the city of Chicago. There's definitely a lot of work to be done. And uh, I know Miss Lightfoot has her plate full and she's trying to do everything she possibly can to, uh, you know, rectify a lot of problems that have been in place for, for quite some time. But uh, I think there's a, a, a way to handle things. Sometimes you have to meet force with force, fire with fire. But sometimes there's a, you know, another approach to, to taking care of business and getting the job done. And hopefully she'll be able to make that happen. Hey, it's the fastest hour in sports conversation. He's the man on the street. He's Marty B. And, of course, Danny Carlino, the Italian stallion. We always to get say. stuff done. Yeah, Folks, I want to learn about plastics and how we can correct this nationwide problem. The marvelous one, Dan Marver from Miller Park. And, of course, Gabe Solgato with our TR60 scoreboard update. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Check us out on uh, Facebook, of course, streaming live. We're on SoundCloud and, of course, every Wednesday, Comcast, 7 p.m. in the northern suburbs, Channel 17, Channel 19, Channel 35. This has been another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. Remember to always keep it locked in. WCPT, 820 AM. Talk to you guys down the road next Sunday. Take care. Gabe, take it away. From Guaranteed Rate Field is sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation. Although the White Sox were defeated by the Minnesota Twins today, uh, Eloy Jimenez returned to the lineup. He had missed the last couple of weeks after injuring his elbow in Kansas City. He was the team's designated hitter today where he went 0 for 3. And before the game, manager Rick Renteria said that he expects Jimenez to be the designated hitter for the next few games as he continues to reacclimate himself to game action. And while Jimenez doesn't exactly enjoy being a designated hitter, he understands that there's a process involved. It's hard to, you know, pay attention to the game. Like, as a DH, it's hard to be focused on the game when you DH, you know. The Cubs defeat the Milwaukee Brewers 11-4 to today, and the Bears had their first full contact practice and training camp today at Bourbon A. This update is sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation, MEF, empowering the next generation of leaders. And don't forget to sign up for the Monster 5K Run and Walk this fall. Go to MonsterEducationFoundation.org to learn more. I'm Gabe Salgado for the Rewind Sports 60 and WCPT 820 Chicago.